Um, I am Megan Duffy. I am a technology partner at QUT. I only started there about six months ago. Um, so my part in this journey is itty bitty, whereas these guys have been involved for a, a lot longer. So we'll get to them sooner rather than later, don't worry. Okay, so the journey so far at QUT is, um, oh, how long? We went too far. Is that we have, um, we've got issues, obviously. Um, we've had, um, Office 365 for a couple of years, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> and we have had various people using it, obviously, as a productivity tool for um, using Outlook and um, SharePoint and all those sort of things. We have been using Teams uh, fairly heavily in different product, different um, operational areas and also in group areas out in the faculty to support each other. And just in 2018, they started a pilot to try and use Teams as a part of their teaching and learning, learning tool set. So we got together a little pilot group of different, um, different faculty-based units and did some tr trialling there. That trial was extended into semester one of this year. In amongst all of this, which is a part of the spaghetti mess that you can see on the screen, um, we had a rather large organisational um, change. Uh, where we had to move people around in different areas from faculties into central and so forth. So um, we lost a little bit of momentum there, I feel. And I think now's the time where we're starting to pick that back up again and we're looking at those institution-wide policies and looking at procedures to help make things happen a bit more automatically um, as opposed to these guys having to manually enter students into different teams and all that sort of thing. So that's kind of where we are at the moment. We are working with um, the learning and teaching unit and we're evaluating how things have gone in semester one with the units that have used Teams and some of the other um, Microsoft tools as well. And we are trying to go forward, like I said, with a, an enterprise-wide approach where we can support our faculties in using these tools in a really responsible way <laughs> so that they can turn to us as they need to, whether it's the learning and teaching unit, digital solutions or wherever else that they need to turn to as well. So that's pretty much where we are. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Brett and we're going to talk a bit about some of these units who have used um, some of these tools. The thing that I did want to mention before Brett comes on is we've got this really good uh, thing at QT where these units are actually nominated as innovation units so that the heads of school and the people who are concerned about survey results are well aware that these units are trialling something new and trying something innovative. So I think that's something that um, not every university or institution has and it's <coughs> worth mentioning as well. So handing over to you, Brett. Thanks, Megan. <coughs> Thanks very much. Where are we? <coughs> All right, so there are some advantages to having an unstructured environment or an unstructured approach. Sometimes uh, we think of structure as uh, limiting. Um, it can also be liberating. And in this particular case, um, we had to approach things in a different way and look for opportunities to work with people that were willing to think outside the box. So, you know, you've heard about, um, you know, governance and, and those sorts of things. Those things are really, really important. And it's important for us as learning designers and educational technologists to work with people like Megan and other people in our digital business services um, so that these things can have a solid base um, to grow from. Where we started back in 2016, uh, there was none of that. So uh, I was fortunate enough to work with uh, some of our leading academics on a capstone unit called animal biology. And we were struggling with some really difficult problems. You know, how to get students to engage in prac work, how to get students to be present at field trips. Um, how to bring students along on that journey that you know, um, starts to bring them into the world of work um, and, and behave as um, professional scientists. Um, some of the uh, problems that you all see in week 10 where you've got empty lecture theatres, that sort of thing. So what we wanted to do is completely turn that around and say, look, your experience 
as future scientists is going to be best served um, by being in the lab and conducting experiments. So we took away the constraint of the 13 week model and we said there are only four days that we want you to be on campus. And in those four days, you'll go through um, a basic one hour lecture, you go through a tutorial, then a workshop before lunch, and then after lunch you'll go straight into the laboratory and you'll be doing experiments. At the end of those experiments, you have generated enough data to be able to um, <coughs> complete some assessment at the end of that intensive day. So obviously, when you're asking students to come on a campus only four days out of the semester, you start to ask other questions like, how are we going to support them in those two or three weeks leading up to that first intensive? We were using OneNote in our professional teams and we were starting to experiment with all of its affordances. Um, so we decided to uh, use OneNote in this particular pilot. So we put, we front loaded everything. We basically put all of the material up there onto OneNote and said, look, go for it. You guys can start Monday of week one and you can um, start this self-paced learning adventure, but we want you to be ready um, for the PRAC in three or four weeks' time. So one interesting thing that happened for me, um, walk, walking into the very first introductory lecture in, in week one, um, you know, just the onboarding thing, um, I said, OK, um, hands up who's used Teams. And I noticed in the classroom, because we'd done the um, adding all of the students to, uh, sorry, not Teams, OneNote, um, before adding, before walking into that initial lecture, we added all of the students into the class one notebook, um, class notebook, and then that very first lecture, I said, okay, who's who's been using OneNote? Um, and students actually had it open in their lap, and about 80% of the class put their hands up. So that was a real eye opener for me. Um, essentially, I just told them that that's what we were going to use, um, and they needed to engage in the content there. Um, one of the ways that we enabled their self-paced learning was to provide them with interaction guides. So we distributed uh, a single page that contained all of the, the links to specific content to answer specific questions that they would need to know before they came into that intensive day. So yes, um, of course, using Blackboard um, specifically for the assessment and for formal announcements. But basically all of the announcements on Blackboard, Black, Blackboard were to um, encourage um, people to visit OneNote. So at this stage, um, the class notebook was, um, it lived on the unit coordinator's uh, OneDrive. Um, and every semester he's had to manually add people, but we are getting around that with some of our internal systems. Uh, so that was 2017. Um, it generated a few case studies um, that we used internally to tell people about what we were doing, um, and also a conference pa paper for ASCII Light a couple of years ago. So then, Internally, um, within Ceph, at around the same time, we were um, looking at using students as partners in a business uh, process uh, re-engineering re effort. Um, using students in the faculty obviously presents a whole um, host of issues, um, but we thought it was um, imperative that we get their expertise as future um, business process management um, professionals. We captured all of our meeting notes um, in OneNote and they set about interviewing all of our faculty staff internally about the business processes they used. We controlled membership of that group through SharePoint <coughs> and stored documents um, 
that would go on to provide some record or documentation of the processes. Th those processes now are published on the QT intranet for everybody, um, irrespective of where they work, to see how those internal processes work within the faculty. So we used Outlook and the group email list to uh, coordinate meetings. So this is part of our um, push towards authentic assessment and work integrated learning. It's really important to engage your students in the business of being professionals um, and also engage them at that educational interface, um, show them the world of work while they're still at university. So then we had uh, these flags for innovation and uh, I had the opportunity to work uh, with um, distinguished professor Peter Cork um, who came to me and he said, look, I've got this problem. We've got these labs. Um, students don't seem to be prepared for them. Um, we're really struggling with attendance in lectures because the students are always in the labs trying to work out problems that we've given them um, outside of the scheduled teaching hours and all that sort of stuff. Um, they were giving micro-assessments every week to you know, basically goad students into performing certain tasks. And I said, well, what, what's the key thing that students are coming into the lab for? And Peter said, well, they, they work with each other to solve problems. Okay, do they really need to come into the lab? Oh, sometimes, you know, sometimes there's these physical things we, we get them to do with the robots, but they can essentially ask problems about code at any time. I said, well, let's enhance that conversation between students. So I introduced um, Peter to Teams. He said, oh, a bit iffy about it. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't want to be notified every five minutes when students are asking questions on Teams. I showed him how to control his notifications on the device. Um, said that you just need to set the ground rules for the students and they'll come and play with you. And it worked. We had um, a huge level of engagement in Teams on day one. Um, students were asking each other questions within that um, general channel. Um, obviously, um, Peter and his teaching team were learning at that stage. Um, also, the, the demonstrators, the lab demonstrators, went, oh, okay, this is a really good idea. Let's use OneNote. Let's use OneNote to create a manual for students to collect all of those questions that they're asking about how to set the robot up. And so, in OneNote, we generated this digital asset. We didn't have bots doing it, though. We had people doing this. And uh, that asset continues to move forward through each iteration of this unit. And again, um, the incumbent learning management system sits underneath all of that. And the students submit their work um, to Blackboard. Um, but they also use other things like MATLAB. So I was really encouraged to see some of the MATLAB um, integration that David mentioned earlier. That's great. So um, another unit that was flagged for innovation, um, teaching interactive design with MS Teams. Again, providing students with that opportunity to um, work together in solving common problems. Um, developing a shared resource on OneNote. Um, we also worked um, in the lecture theatre with the unit coordinator to make sure that all of the presentation, um, all of the PowerPoint slides were available to the students sitting in the lecture theatre at the same time. So again, getting away from this need to upload the slides after the lecture. And um, having the ability to make those changes on the fly. Um, that's a disclaimer there about Blackboard. We're still required to submit all of the assessment through Blackboard. All right, so now I'm gonna hand you over to Frank, who's gonna tell you more about what we've been doing in law and uh, provide you with some concrete examples. So following on from Brett, um, and Brett was a very val valuable person to meet with um, because he'd been down the road, he'd tried these things and had a lot of success and enthusiasm. And also he had you know, measured caution about how to approach these things. So meeting with Brett for coffee was one of the first steps in um, this move towards um, using Microsoft Teams and, and the broader set of 365 technologies 
um, to deliver what was a new set of four units, um, a minor in law and technology. Um, Holly Russell was involved. She couldn't be here today, so I'm speaking on her behalf. I was involved, and Jonathan Nolder, who's here, was working with us at the time. And we introduced these tools across justice as well, but I'm just gonna talk about the law aspect of that. We wanted to benefit, and part of the goal we were, we were, we were given, and the freedom we were given, was to trial these new collab collaborative and communication tools to benefit from using more modern tools, but also, as a lot of people have mentioned, to model, model the use of those tools, which people would probably be using in law practice in the future. I'm just gonna walk you through kind of the workflow of how students, uh, we decided to set it up the first time around, um, from Blackboard through to a number of different technologies. So I'll walk you through that, and then I've just got a few points to make, and that's kind of, kind of me. Okay, so each unit started in Blackboard. We did a, a slightly, uh, a, a light revision of our Blackboard design to fit in how would we would uh, use um, a combination of, I guess, static, um, interactive, but really it's static content, and then the collaborative tools. And one of the things that came out of this project I found was it, it created a great discussion with the academics about um, where do, where, where do students collaborate? Where should learning activities happen? Um, how do we use this in Blackboard or how do we use external tools? Um, and anyone who's tried any of these projects, you come up with, you walk away with 100, 100 questions after your first meeting of what you're allowed to do, what's possible, what's reasonable, what's going to work. Each unit starts in Blackboard and we put work into some multimedia work, so we, we shot um, good welcome videos, we did orientation videos on how to use Microsoft Teams um, to orientate the students. I also had my first um, attempt at um, creating a SharePoint sites, so we also use SharePoint um, based on Brett's recommendation, but we probably use it a bit differently. There's a bit of a promotion site as well to promote people in the, in the units that they can actually do this as a whole minor. So we made this uh, an attractive space with information, videos, blogs from academics. Um, so that was part of the environment we're using as well. It's quite ambitious, this project, really, because <laughs> we also use RISE, Articulate RISE, for the first time. So we used a lot of new technologies at the same time, um, which, yeah, maybe we we'll take it a step, step at a time next time, but we did a lot of things at the same time. So this, these RISE modules are embedded inside, um, inside Blackboard for the content. And at the end of each module, we have learning activities. Which the students could then single click out to a Teams channel. And we, had, we used um, Teams um, uh, class notebooks. So each, as you, those, you, you may know this, you may not know this, each channel links to its own uh, OneNote page as well. So students would jump into that module's activity. For example, module four. This created some good discussion as well. There's lots of ways to structure channels. So Brett's, um, a lot of Brett's examples, they structured channels around topics of interest which I thought was great that students would come together and uh, share robot parts and other people use it for, uh, you know, Q&A, assessment, preparation, prac, depends what, what unit you're teaching. Um, these particular law units decided they wanted to use it just as a sort of a weekly channel. So rightly or wrongly, that's how they've gone with that. And they use some great discussion, got some great discussion going. They didn't really use shared files much. Again, we trialled uh, Microsoft um, Word online as opposed to OneNote. I don't know if anyone's trialled those two things because we, we love OneNote and I can see how for engineering with lots of sketching and, and that kind of thing, it's perfect. But for law students who are generally just having a bit of a discussion and putting some information on, um, the canvas could get a bit um, unwieldy. So, we trialled those two things, but we did end up using 
notes for collaborative activities. And these collaborative activities were done online and in class. And one thing I wanted to show you, I don't know if anyone's mentioned this over the last couple of days, but something we used in Teams, which we discovered just kind of by accident, was in the um, conversations channel, if you hit record, you can use Microsoft Stream and you actually can record um, and do a live stream of the lesson. So we did a trial with this and one of the academics actually um, would live stream each week his lectures so external students could join in live and they can, you can click a button and it minimises the video in the, in the top left corner, which is really neat. So they can keep using the chat and the notebook while they're watching the video. Then when the video is finished, it goes into the conversation feed. Then you can click a button and make it a tab. So that all the, that recording becomes a tab in that channel. So we thought that was pretty neat. And this academics, yep, he's, uh, I went through it, he's done it each week. So he obviously found that useful and, and stuck to that strategy. So how all these things work in, in, with uh, tools we're already using, such as Echo 360, and those conversations are still being, being had in terms of, you know, is it transitioning over to Teams? Are we using both? Are we ditching one or the other? That's, those conversations are, are interesting. Just some final points. Um, yeah, something we found really important was to prepare the academics um, and do actual trial runs in the classroom. So we actually got them to do trial runs in the classroom in the lecture theatre with no students there and get them to actually practice teaching live using OneNote, Teams, recording, the whole workflow. That was really critical, particularly when you're using um, technologies for the first time. I believe face-to-face -face training is kind of essential when you're using something for the very first time. Um, we also orientated the students. So we had orientation videos. We also gave them some simple collaborative tasks early on in the unit so they could start using the tools. I think an interesting conversation came out of this, which was, is this just an add-on to support external students, which is a conversation um, I've had many times with people. How do we support external students? Is it just an, an add-on? I, I feel like this moves it towards uh, a more inclusive uh, learning experience for everyone, rather than thinking of externals and internals. So I thought that was a really healthy thing that came out of it. Questions came up about where, where will when we set this up, where will students spend their time? Will they be in the, the OneNote group, in the channels, in the actual OneNote? Will they still set up their own Facebook groups? So those conversations are ongoing. How will students actually behave once we set this up? And what can we learn from that for the next iteration of the design? Yes, and from what I've heard of the law school, um, they're planning to continue to trial and use these tools. So they've had some success. Each unit approached it slightly differently in terms of the mix of their different 365 tools and how they work together. Okay. Thanks. Oh yes, and also we've um, we've got some questions for you. So <laughs> if you wanted to give us some answers to these, then I'd be more than grateful. Um, you can ask. Us anything you like. You can also um, help us by providing some of those answers. Ray. Um, my question is for Frank. So um, mm. I like the look of your Rise modules and so on. That link yeah. to Teams, mm. that has to be updated every time you run the course, right? Oh, yeah, uh, course copy and sustainability. Yeah, yeah. So that linking to, which is one of the big challenges yeah. I think that we have about the integration of that and permissions. Yeah. So um, in the standard law units, um, <coughs> we're very big on sustainability and things bound to be managed by the academics and unit copy. Um, with this particular set of units in the minor, um, we were kind of given the green light to innovate, bells and whistles. Um, if it's not totally sustainable, do it anyway. So it was, it was interesting. It was a real... So I was totally aware what we're making will need remaking. 
We also made a direct link to Teams from Blackboard. So whether you have to link to that activity or whether just train the students to go to Teams, find the, the workshop they're in, I think that's fine as well. So I think you can do it in a sustainable way. But yes, you're right, it's not sustainable, those links. <laughs> but it looks attractive. Yeah. Any more questions? I was just going to say, on that note about um, teaching students to just go to Teams or go to OneNote, what I found, um, even way back with animal biology, is that when they received that invitation email saying someone's added you to the class notebook, that's where they went. And if everything that they need is there, if you sent them that welcome email and they get a welcome response when they <coughs> arrive in that general channel, then you've won half the battle. You don't really need to tell them much more about what's on Blackboard because they're not using it. Over the back there. Yes. In advanced robotics, we had basically one announcement at the beginning of the semester saying everything's happening on Teams. And in that very first lecture, the lecturer made sure that everybody knew that's where the conversation was going to happen. So during our, um, we do two surveys, the student responses about the um, satisfaction level in the, in the unit. Um, in the middle of the semester, the students were saying, this is so great, we don't have to form Facebook groups anymore to get these problems solved. And they're not just solving them with the people sitting next to them or the people that they know on Facebook, they're solving them in that whole community environment. All of the other students, 110 or something like that, and all of the demonstrators and all of the tech staff and the teaching team are uh, in that one place giving answers to those problems. <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, and that was an early part of the com of the um, Jonathan will remember this. An early part of the trial is we. We looked at putting all the content in Teams, not just as a collaborative space, but actually using OneNote as like a interactive textbook. We looked at how, can you lock down bits of it and all, all kinds of stuff. So I, I trialled setting up a whole unit in there, and then we also did it in Rise, and then we decided that it was problematic <laughs> putting the content in OneNote, and, and Teams in OneNote are best for, uh, in, this, in this instance, collaboration, whereas I think Brett actually put, they actually built content more in teams. So in law, there was a, in the end, there was a fairly clear, clear divide between this is your learning material and this is your collaboration space. Um, yeah, and I think that's the thing. It's still a trial and it's still, there's conversations around. It's, it is frustrating working as designers, working across too many platforms as well, let alone students' experience. So. Yeah. yeah, so similar to Frank's experience in law for um, the inter interactive design unit, um, most of the content about the assessment um, was included on Blackboard and we, we just used a, a tab within one of the channels, the assessment tab, to um, just link in Blackboard and show all the information that was on those pages. So students didn't actually need to go back to Blackboard but all of the information that we'd created there surrounding assessment that was in the assessment area of Blackboard was replicated in Teams. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Uh, are there any more questions? Final question. 